And you also spoke about performance anxiety. That was something that I really experienced when I was a, when I was running. And, you know, earlier on, I said I sucked at running. But the truth was, I just got in my head every single meet. At practice, I would be by far, and I'm not trying to, like, talk myself up here, yeah. by far the best, like, um, distance runner we had. And um, I would, you know, dominate all of the practices. But we get into competition, and I was the worst person on the team. And this was consistent. And that was because days before the, the meet, I would just be thinking about it. Oh, my God, what if I do bad? Oh, my God, what if, what if like, I come in last? And I would have so much anxiety at the starting line, my legs would be shaking. Yeah. And um, they, my legs always, huh? <laughs> they feel heavy. Like they yes. Feel like, they feel like they don't belong to you. Exactly. And um, so you, it's like that. It's like my legs were already burning before racing. And so when, when, like I'm 10 meters in, my legs feel like they're burning already. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have half a mile to run or I have three miles to run. And that was all because of performance anxiety. Right. And uh, one of the, that's one of the reasons why I switched to jumping, because I'm like, all I have to do is just run in the straight line and jump. I don't have yeah. to worry about, yeah, I don't have to worry about somebody watching me basically fail at this event that I'm doing, right? It, it's over quickly. You know, I'm really happy that that's something that you work on. And that's not something a lot of coaches do anymore. They don't work on the mental aspects of performance. You know, you can have the best athlete in the world, but if, hey, game day comes around, yeah. he or she is completely psyched out. All the hard work you've been putting in and it's even more stressful for the athlete. You know, it's, it's not really going to get anywhere. So that's something that, you know, that needs to be focused on when it comes to training. Um, it's just as important as the physical aspect. So what are some of the challenges, you know, that you see athletes face a lot when they come to you? <clears throat> okay. I mean, there's a variety, right? I think when people come in initially, the challenges they're facing are much more superficial. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they <clears throat> maybe they're a, a shorter athlete on their team. That's typically what I'll get is that, you know, emails from parents going, I got a short kid and they play volleyball. I need you to help them. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> tell me more. Um, they're short and, or, you know, they come in and it's a matter of, I, I want to be able to move faster on the floor and all these things. When, mm -hmm. when I get them in the lab and we spend a little bit of time together, kind of off the, the back end of what we were just talking about, a lot of the, the issues that people are having or those hurdles that people are facing are much more self-imposed. They're much more self-imposed. Yeah. You know, any, like anything can work in, in performance. Really, like if you're doing something consistently over a long enough period of time, things are going to change and you will make progress. Okay, some things yes. help that, that progress uh, uh, line be a little steeper, a little quicker, and some don't. But ultimately, if you're doing something, you're going to get better. When athletes come in here, my focus is much more on on figuring out a little bit more about like who this person is, what's going mm -hmm. on um, outside of the gym that's maybe causing them to have an issue with progressing beyond this point. And you mentioned it really quickly. You, you said something that I think people need to um, remember. As you said, I, I had such a, I was so afraid of failing and losing, right? That my legs felt like they didn't belong to me and I felt jello -y. Anxiety is, is really just that. It's a fear of, it's a fear of failure combined with like a, a variety of things that you can't physically control, right? Things are out of your control yes. because they're, they've, they have not happened yet. So we then have this like linear one track frame of mind that tries to go through all of the situations in which things can go wrong. Thinking that, yes. we're thinking that we're essentially preparing ourselves for that. But all we're doing is we are disturbing the natural flow of electricity. And that's why you're talking about feeling uh, almost like your legs are burning or heavy is that elevated anxiety is elevated cortisol levels in the body. When, yes. cortisol, when cortisol levels are elevated, it makes the communication between brain and neuromuscular system much slower. So you actually aren't as explosive, fast, or um, uh, athletic when your anxiety is very, very high. So it's, that's where elements of that breathing come into play where you can kind of calm the nervous system down mm -hmm. so you can refeel your legs again and you can yes. do what you do so well in practice because in practice, the, there's no pressure there. You're not imposing mm -hmm. pressure. 
you know amongst your teammates that you are the best there. So it's like, okay, I'm already the best here. But then once you've established that and you realize that you're going into a population and a pool of people you've never met, I don't know if I'm the best there. And I have this reputation amongst my core group of friends that I'm the best. If I lose here, that's going to affect my relationship with this oh, core group. And therefore it changes who I am and, and, and my value. And you start to put heavier and heavier mm. weight on things that in reality, most people don't really care about, right? They, oh, people my. like you because you're you and whether or not you get first or 15th or 30th, they might make a comment like what happened? Hey, you'd be like, I wasn't on my game today. That's cool. You yeah. learn from that. Uh, you learn from that. So those changes in my gym and the problems with athletes, I think are much deeper than the superficial problems of just wanting to be able to jump higher. That's something that, you know, we have to think about more as athletes and especially the breath work. Now, I know that there's a lot of different type of breath works out there that help reduce anxiety. You know, that's something that you, you know, help your athletes with, right? You know, that's, that's a technique that they use when they go to their competitions, their game day, that they incorporate when they're feeling nervous or having anxiety. And that in turn also improves their performance because they're not right. going out there with jello legs. They're not going out there worried. They might have, they might be nervous, but maybe it's more excited nervousness where it's helping them in competition. A question for that is just how many times a week do you have your athletes do breath work? Oh, they're doing breath work every day. I mean, breath work, I think every is something day. that <clears throat> I teach them how to do it and then reinforce the importance of that becoming part of your day. Anytime, yeah. Anytime there's a lot of variables at play, whether you're mm -hmm. in the gym and around a lot of athletes or on the court or whether you're just out and about and, and in crowds of people for me, like yes. my anxiety, my anxiety extends. Like I have clinical anxiety that I, I'm much more aware of now and I'm, I'm able to use elements of it as a strength now, but I recognize mm -hmm. that, you know, when I get into big crowded situations and I don't know people that I, my anxiety goes super high. So yeah. t teaching people whether or not someone's anxiety is that high or whether they just experience anxiety every now and then uh, that mm -hmm. they recognize breath work every day. It's like meditation. It's, that's, that's what I introduce athletes to right away is just this idea of, of really short um, manageable bouts of, of meditation that teaches mm -hmm. this, this kind of box breathing variation. So um, four seconds in through the nose, mm -hmm. four second hold, four second exhale and the visualization is is four seconds four seconds four seconds four mm -hmm. seconds forming this box right but yeah every every day at least having a moment where you take five box breaths mm -hmm. uh, when people are starting out it'll feel like a chore like something that they have to do so it's best yeah. to put it in a position where it's like scheduled or maybe right before bed uh, or right in the morning those are great times to explore a little bit of that breath work, but man, there is an incredible power to feeling more at ease with these like imposed expectations and all this different stuff that kind of comes up. Like, here's what I tell people, what a privilege it is to mm -hmm. have anxiety over playing a sport. Like, like what a privilege that is to be able to be like, wow, I'm so nervous about playing this game I'm about to play. Some mm -hmm. people are pretty nervous about other things that are vastly yeah. more, vastly more, we'll call it important <laughs> or carry a lot more weight. But when yes. someone comes to me and goes, I, I just, I got so much nerves when I'm going to serve a, a ball and I'm, and I'm in front of the crowd and all this stuff. What a privilege. You get a it stage is. to be able to showcase all of your hard yeah. work that you've been doing. And knowing mm -hmm. that not only are like, are the moments that are you're successful in are important, but the moments that you struggle are just as important to, 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 um, to cementing the person who you are. How yes, do you deal yeah. with adversity? You need to expose yourself to those settings. They're not easy, but wow, are they rewarding, Hey, right? Like when you step away from those moments, and you're able to look back and go, holy shit, like I just did something that made me so uncomfortable and I got through it and I'm here. Like that's mm -hmm. an that's a experience and a half that you will always remember.